Okay, I decided to uh, make a very, very small tutorial on um, how to prepare IPython notebooks and how to work with uh, Jupyter um, with our pro uh, programming environment. Um, first remark, definitely you'll be much better off when, uh, uh, if you know anything about computers, you won't have to watch this, but uh, you probably rather look at the tutorials that are online everywhere on the internet. But uh, if you're not, um, please take the chance and watch me prepare one of the documents for the lecture. This is completely unprepared, so probably I will make a lot of mistakes. And uh, you will watch me make these mistakes, but uh, anyway. Okay, um, I will show you this uh, in the example of the department's Jupyter server. So uh, this is the address over here. It's also on the Learn web. And uh, when you start up um, the uh, uh, interface for the first time, then it will look something like this. Only this side here on the on this left side over here will be blank because you have no files. I've already prepared some files for various um, lectures. Uh, and the one we're talking about now is inverse problems. And uh, this is, well, I, I really like to structure my documents. So uh, this should be the first lecture. So uh, let me give this a correct name. One introduction. And uh, in, in the very first lecture, I already told you something about uh, the uh, diffusion equation and uh, also with a Python notebook, that's this one. And now I want to prepare a second example, and that's the um, uh, that is um, something about finite differences. Okay, so uh, I want to create a Python three notebook, uh, which I would. I mean, now that launcher is already here, but usually I would just press plus over here and start with a Python notebook. Now this is blank. And uh, for me, it's very important that a program is finally a document, uh, which I can really present. So it, have, it should have a title, it should have formulas and so on. And you will see that. First, I will give uh, a name to this one. So this is finite differences. So um, let me rename this to finite differences. I always like it if file names do not have spaces, so I use it this way. Uh, now this should have a title and uh, actually you can use format in Python notebooks. You will just have to switch to markdown over here. And uh, to give this document a title, I use the number sign, hash sign, and I start this with shift return. So that's now the title of this document. Uh, note that there's uh, that there are some help functions available. So if you go to help here, then you can find the markdown reference. And uh, this is how you can actually, what, what you can use to, uh, um, to structure your document. And of course you have something like where well, you can have lists uh, you can have numbered lists and you can make something bold. Uh, and the main thing is you can have headings and that's what I'm using here. Okay, finite differences. And uh, I also want to write down what I really want. Uh, show that the error in finite differences is controlled by size. Now this is what I want to do. And um, so this is mainly a description for me. Um, use the forward of finite difference. And now I want to give a formula. So I can actually enter 
hash code here. So that's uh, find the front. And f of x over h. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to enlarge this a little bit because I'm the quality of my eyes is deprecated. So and then, uh, there it is. There's a see. Yes, and that should be an approximate approximation for the um, for the first derivative. Use f of x sine of x. Okay, uh, so what we would like to do is uh, we would like to uh, um, to uh, test uh, this approximation for various values of h, uh, and uh, we also write down the point. So I will also equals two one. Okay, the first thing we always do in Python is uh, import the used packages. Probably we'll use something like, I always use the same ones, numpy. I should include math because we need the sign. And uh, probably we want, we want to plot something. Uh, And uh, if you know anything about Python and uh, you know the standard libraries that we will use. Okay, then uh, we need to find our function f. So that's now the sign. And uh, we will use so first derivative um, <laughs> and, uh, the um, derivative is the cosine and we will use as example x equals to one and uh, I always press shift re return to run what I have in these blocks now, uh, what we would expect is that, uh, yeah, exactly. So let's let's try what is f of x, 0.84, and f prime of x, right? I don't know if the numbers are correct, but uh, I believe that it does. Now we have a finite difference. Now, uh, and uh, we have something like f of x h minus f of x. Now, uh, let's check whether this is approximately correct. So I'm, I'm, I'm fixing the f over here. You might give it as a parameter, but uh, I don't do that. So let's check um, find our difference of f and one minus three of x and three. Into the minus three. It works. Now let's look if that's a good approximation for the first derivative. 
this, right? That's about four to the minus four. Okay, so uh, we want to uh, give a table of this uh, error that we have over here um, with respect to H. Now, let's do that in the following way. I wish to test this, uh, uh, this finite difference formula for H equal to 0 0.1, 0 .1, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, and so on. So let's start with the loop for um, n in range 0 to, let's say, 20. h is 10 to the minus, uh, should be 10 to the minus n. And uh, I don't, really, I don't know what it is. So uh, I would probably have to look that up. But I hope it's something like 10 to the minus n. I hope that's the way you write it in Python. So let's try if that's true. Well, at least it seems. Let's bring it out. Yes, exactly. So that's the ages that we want. And uh, now I want to check the uh, finite difference formula um, for these ages. So, uh, uh, error is finite difference. of x and h minus for the true first derivative. And what we want to have is we want to have the absolute value of that. So I hope it's something like this. Okay. Obviously, it's not. Math has no apps, so probably. By the way, uh, of course, whenever I uh, forgot about some Python commands, I can also I can always look it up over here. It's in the many of them are actually in the uh, Python reference, and you see there's also a NumPy reference, a SciPy reference, Matplotlib reference. That's all we need up there. Okay, now uh, we need to print this out, and. Uh, well, what you can see is um, it's exactly what you would expect, right? So uh, for um, h equals to 1, we have quite a large error. That's because the approximation error is, uh, is really big at that point. And the smaller we choose h, um, the larger the, the smaller the error gets, right? I mean, that's what we expect. If we uh, choose the h very small over here, then we will only have a small error in uh, the uh, error of this uh, finite difference uh, approximation. So it gets smaller uh, for 10 to the minus four, 5, it's uh, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7, it gets smaller, smaller, smaller. And what might be surprising it at this point, it gets larger again. So at some point it gets a little bit larger uh, and here 10 to the minus 5. And then we have quite a large error, which is even larger than uh, the one we started with. OK, um, that's maybe a little bit surprising. Um, I will talk about this uh, in the lecture, but uh, you, can all, you can already see. Um, let's assume that h is very, very, very small. Then if from the uh, lectures on numerical analysis or numerical linear algebra, you know that computers have uh, a limited precision. So when we compute this 1 plus h over here, then if h is extremely small, then the h will be will completely vanish into the uh, into the 1. So 1 plus h will not be representable. And 1 plus h for very small h is actually exactly the same as 1. So uh, for a very small h, this over here is 1. The x over here is also 1. So what we're computing here is f of 1 minus f of 1. So um, that's, uh, that's 0. And so the approximation is 0 for this finite difference. OK, um, now we will plot this error. And uh, to do that, I need to record it. So um, um, 
will use a zero list. And uh, that zero list con should contain the 20 entries that I have. So is that how you do it? Yes. I always need to, I'm, I'm not very much into Python, so uh, I always need to check this. Error list of n is um, wrong. <laughs> and also wish to record the H's. And uh, H. Now we should have a list of all errors. And we should have H's, right. Now, we can plot this. Work. Interesting. Why? Ah, not on H, H list, of course. Okay, but uh, this is not uh, this is not really what we wanted because uh, now um, we have H's ranging from zero to one, but um, well, there are actually twenty values in this small interval over here. So what we would like to have is um, a, a semi-logarithmic representation where we have the log of H. Uh, down here. So uh, I think what it does is let's uh, let's see if I remember t dot semi log x something like that. Oh. Uh, and I will. So that's what the help function is for. Matplotlib. So search for some log. Yes. Matplotlib here, semi log of y. Make a plot with. Ah, okay. I need to. Semi log x. So plt dot semi log x. X So uh, what you can see here is that uh, for 10 to the minus 1, the error is quite large, then it gets smaller as we expect, then it stays more or less at the same level, and then it becomes larger again. So we have um, a curve which is large, very close to zero, where if we could choose h very, very small, very close to zero, it then becomes smaller and then it becomes larger again. So it seems to be important that we choose h correctly. Um, we could also look at this in the upper logarithmic scale, it's probably even better. Yes, and here we see in the double logarithmic scale we have, here we can actually see where's the minimum. We have a minimum for t about 10 to the minus eight. And uh, well, then it becomes bigger, it becomes larger again. Now, um, this is already part of what I want to say. Um, it's not the complete solution. We are, I will uh, add some things for the lecture, but more or less that document is now done. Um, not quite, because all plots should have a title. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you should do some other things about this, but um, let's uh, forget about this. Let's make a semicolon here. So. Get this. And uh, now this is something I could 
probably remember what I did when I looked at this for the second time. So this is something I really want to keep. So I save it. And also the nice thing about the notebooks is I can now export this as a PDF. In fact, it runs everything through LaTeX. And uh, I can then open it here, I hope. Yes, there it is. I have to, whoops. No, it's rather small around here. Uh, why can't I move it? Ah, okay. Well, that's a different thing. Okay. Now, this is my program now as a document. And if I was to uh, actually submit this uh, in an exercise, and then this is exactly what I would expect, right? I mean, it should be, um, there should be some more remarks here, there should be a little bit more description of everything. But uh, I mean, this, this, if I wanted to submit this somewhere, this is the way I would do it. And uh, so if you want to do us a favor, then do exactly the same thing and use much more comments. You will see when I finally present this in the lecture, it will hopefully look much better, even much better than this. Okay, so this was very long. And um, as I said, you can probably do a much better and much faster job if you just look at the documents in uh, uh, on the internet. But um, well, whatever, right? Uh, some people like to watch videos. Okay, so that's it.